Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video, we're going to look at some measures of variation. And my data here is for two groups of students that took a quiz. And I have made a histogram for both sets of data. Here is the one group and over there is the other. You can see just by looking at these that there is more variation in this group. The values are more spread out. And here they are more concentrated, okay? But we also want to have something we can calculate, some numbers that will tell us that this over there varies more than this set of data. And we're going to look at three such measures today. Range, interquartile range, and mean absolute deviation, also called MAD, or MAD for short. Okay, now range is the easiest. It is basically just the difference between your minimum and maximum value. So you look at the minimum and the maximum, 12 and 17 in this case, and subtract. And so that is the range. So this is 5. Over here, minimum 8, maximum 20, so the range is 12. However, range is not always the best measure of variation because sometimes in your data, you might have an outlier, what is called an outlier. Let's say, for example, that here we had these students and then there was one student who got four points, okay? If, if this one student was added here as four points, then that would make the range to be 13. However, that kind of data item is called an outlier because it differs so greatly from the rest of the group, okay? It is like a totally different, as if it didn't really belong to the group. So range is very sensitive to outliers. Let's look at these others too. Interquartile range. You use it with median. In fact, you have to calculate the median to find the interquartile range. And what it is, is basically we will divide this data into quarters or into fourths. And then we will take the first and third quarter point and subtract and find the range here, find the difference. For that, we first need to find the median. To find the median, that's the middlemost number, right? Or if there's an even number of values, then I take the average of the two middlemost items here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that means the eighth item here is my median. There. Okay. Here's median. And now I look at the first half of the data here and find the median of this. And that will give me the lower quartile, okay? So here's, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven items. I'm not including the median here. I'm just looking at this lower half of the data, these seven items, and I take the median of that, or the middlemost number of this seven, which is the fourth number here. So this is the first quartile or the lower quartile point. And then over here, Again, I have seven items here, and I take the medium of those seven, which would be the fourth, fourth item, which is this one here. It's called the third quartile. Median is the second quartile. So now the data is divided into four parts. And the interquartile range is when I subtract this and this, 13 and 14. It is only one. And of course, that is indicating how close together the data items are. Over here, we do the same. Let's count how many we have. 20 this time. So the median, okay, half of the data items is 10 and 10. The median will be the average of the 10th and 11th item here. 10 and 11, both are 14s. The median is here, it is 14. And then, the first quartile, here I have 10 items, and uh, so it will be the average of the fifth and sixth item. Five and six, it's 12 here, okay? It's 12 in here. This one would be 15.5, okay? Like that. And now the interquartile range would be the difference between these two. 15.5 and 12, so we get 3.5.
Whereas here, the median was 13 and the interquartile range was 1. Okay, so number-wise, it is agreeing with our, what we can see in the graph that that is more spread, that data is more spread.